Hello and welcome to this virtual tour of Thomas Jefferson's Poplar Forest. My name is Mary Massey. I'm the manager of programs and education here at Poplar Forest and I'll be showing you around through Mr. Jefferson's retreat home today. If you haven't had a chance to yet, I encourage you to go watch our brand new orientation video. It's uploaded on our YouTube page and it gives a wonderful introduction to the property. So I highly encourage you to go watch that if you have a chance. Now between 1809 and 1823, Thomas Jefferson was retired from public service and he would travel here to Poplar Forest between three or four times a year, often traveling with two of his grandchildren. This house was designed by and built for Thomas Jefferson to be used as a retreat home during his retirement. So this was a very special place for him and also for his grandchildren. Now when they would arrive, they would pull up into this carriage turnaround, which is a brand new restored surface. They would disembark the carriage right at the bottom of these steps and then they would walk into the house through these doors, just like we're about to do. Now you can see here, we've got this beautiful entry hall and there's some conservation work going on across the house that we'll get to in a few minutes. So if you'll follow me into the first room of the house. This room is called the Northwest Chamber. This room would have been used as storage, or a bedchamber if need be. Today it highlights a lot of the restoration work that we've been doing in the house. You can see all of the restored entablature, door frames, chair rails, baseboards. This work is continuing to go on even while we're closed and hopefully will be done with the restoration of the house in the coming years. But in this room we really showcase this floor plan of the house so that you can really understand how this octagonal house is laid out. We're standing in this room here and as you can see, it's four elongated octagonal rooms that surround a perfectly cubed center room. Now the lower level of the house would have had this exact same floor plan, but it would have been used as storage or sleeping space for the hired workmen and the enslaved men who would have worked on and in the house. Now this room next to us would have been Thomas Jefferson's bedchamber. And if you've been to Monticello, Jefferson's main residence in Charlottesville, it might look slightly familiar to you. Behind the videographer, um, you can see this lovely French alcove bed that Jefferson had installed here. He had one of these at Monticello as well. And we've got this little digital rendering too of what it will look like when there's an actual bed. Just in case you've never had a chance to go to Monticello, I encourage you to do that as well. But you can see here that with the bed in the center, that this alcove bed actually breaks the room up into two separate spaces. Similarly to um, his room at Monticello, he most likely probably had a study on one half of the room and a bed chamber on the other side for dressing and getting ready for bed in the evenings. Now we also, on either side of the house, have a stair pavilion. This stair pavilion is on the west side of the house. It has not been restored yet um, with all of the plaster, but this would have provided access for Jefferson and Burl Colbert, his enslaved manservant, to get to the lower level and back upstairs to Jefferson's bedchamber easily. We believe Burl Colbert most likely slept in the room below Jefferson's, so the stair pavilion would have provided easy access for him to get up here for Jefferson. And now we'll go through the other side of the room and then go from the most private room of the house. No one would have been in this room except for Jefferson and Burl Colbert, most likely, and into the most public room of the house. So follow me. Now this room is the dining room. If you had been a guest in Jefferson's day, you would have come in from the front door like we did just a couple minutes ago, straight into this room. And this room is a perfect cube. It's 20 feet by 20 feet by 20 feet tall. And it's capped with a 16 foot skylight as well. One of the first skylights in a private house in America. Um, now this room would have been used for all entertainment purposes. Jefferson didn't build this house with entertainment in mind like he did Monticello. Monticello was a much more public house. This was a very private home. Um, but Jefferson did invite neighbors and guests over uh, periodically, and they would have spent most of their time in this room. Now, in keeping with the theme of the house, the dining room table that you see here is a three-sectioned, elongated, octagonal table. The two ends can come off, 
these two. The center section can be pulled out of the table if only Jefferson is here, maybe just Jefferson and his grandchildren. The two ends can be put together, and it's a perfect octagon. So Jefferson would have done all of his entertaining here. Um, the room is designed for conversation and light to be in the room. The four doorways on each section of the room are surrounded in glass doors. This provided for privacy. So when meals were brought up, breakfast was served at 8 a.m. Supper was served usually around 3 p.m. Uh, Hannah, Jefferson's enslaved cook, would have prepared all of the meals in the kitchen that's located in the wing of offices that we'll see in just a few minutes. And Burl Colbert would bring the meals up through this east chamber and into the dining room. He would place all of the food on these dumb waiters that you see on the side of the table. Then he would exit the room and close the door so mealtime could be had in privacy. Um, but I'll still allow a lot of light into the room. Now, if you were a guest staying with Jefferson for the evening um, to have dinner and you were staying afterwards, you would have gone straight into this next room of the house, the second most formal room. This is the parlor. This room would have been a central hub of living space for the Jefferson family. As you can see, there's a bookcase here with a few books on it. Jefferson kept a very large library here of about a thousand books, including about 400 of these petite format books that we have on display right here. These are miniaturized books that are the perfect size for slipping into a pocket when you go on your daily horseback ride like Jefferson did every single day. He also um, would have spent a lot of time in here with the grandchildren and any guests in the evening. They would have been served tea and fruit here about 9 or 10 o'clock at night for their evening meal. And they would have spent time in here reading, talking to each other, talking about their day, what they were going to do the next day. Um, and so Jefferson would have had several pieces of furniture in here that we know about, including this Campeche chair that he had sent from Monticello. Now the one Jefferson had here at Poplar Forest looked very similar to this one. This is a reproduction. But this allowed for Jefferson to sit comfortably. Um, by his late 60s, early 70s, he was suffering from rheumatism in his lower back very badly. And it was painful to sit straight up or lay all the way down for long periods of time. And so this chair allowed Jefferson to sit in a reclined position that was much more comfortable on his back. Now the other lovely thing about this room is Jefferson's overall design for light. The nice thing about an octagonal house is it eliminates all dark corners in a space and allows for some extra wall space for windows. And you can really see that here in the parlor. We've got these four triple hung sash windows uh, that encompass the whole south wall of the house. These can be opened all the way up to the, to the top uh, section of the window and allow for access onto the south portico so that the South Portico could be used as another living space, a sort of outdoor living space. Now you can see here we've clearly got a boarded up section of the wall. Um, there's some conservation work going on right now on some of the glass windows that would have been into the parlor as well. So normally this is uh, more glass section windows like we saw into the dining room. Um, but as with any historic res uh, restoration, conservation work never ends and so we're in the process of doing a lot of that work as well. Now from here, we'll move on to the east side of the house, which is gonna look quite a bit different than everything you've seen so far. So we'll cut back through the dining room. And here we have a space that looks and sounds quite a bit different than the rest of the house. This room originally would have been used as the granddaughter's bedchamber when Jefferson originally designed the house. Um, but as you can see, looking around, it looks quite a bit different. We haven't plastered these walls. Um, this room is gonna stay just as you see it um, forever. And part of the reason for that is so that we can really talk about the corporation for Jefferson's Poplar Forest and our history with the house. Now in 1845, after the house left Jefferson family ownership, um, the house did catch on fire, unfortunately, and it burned the entire interior and roof line of the house. Now, thankfully, Jefferson crafted the house out of brick, as you can see looking around the house. And so the shell of the house still stood, but later owners rebuilt, they remodeled to make the house more livable for them and their families. So when the Corporation for Jefferson's Poplar Forest formed in 1983 and purchased the house, 
One of the first things we had to do was strip everything out of the house, get it to its bare bones, and see what we could find. So this was part of the restoration investigation to figure out exactly how we turned the house from a room that looks like this into what we saw previously on the house tour. So this room and the next room we're going to go into are going to stay just as you see them today. Now in the 18 teens, um, Jefferson actually does some major construction in this room and changes up the symmetry of the house a bit. He actually constructs a wall on this side of the bed, on the alcove bed, and turns the bed chamber on the north side of the room into a true bed chamber with an alcove bed. And this half of that room that we're standing in actually became a pantry. So this would have been used to store linens, dishware, anything else of value um, that they wanted to keep safe while they weren't staying in the house but people didn't need access to. So that would have all been kept on this side of the house. Now there is another major difference in this room from Jefferson's room, and that is right through here and out these windows. You can see, although the sun is very bright today on this gorgeous morning in Virginia, um, there is a, a wing of offices that kind of jut out on the east side of the house. Now this would have housed four service rooms of the house, there was a storage room, the kitchen that Hannah would have worked in, the laundry, and a smokehouse. These have all been restored. You can visit these and keep an eye out. There'll be a later tour of those buildings put online as well so everyone can see those. Um, but they would have provided services for the house. So Burl Colbert would have brought all the meals from the kitchen up this stair pavilion here on the east side of the house, through the pantry, and into the dining room. And you can see in this stair pavilion as well, that not only do the stairs match what we saw on the west side of the house, but there's another big difference, and that is this doorway. And this doorway actually provides access out onto this terrace roof that Jefferson designed. This provides a relatively flat surface so that you can actually go out and use the roof of the wing of offices for your exercise. Jefferson wrote to his daughter Martha that he liked to sally out with the owls and the bats in the evening time here at Poplar Forest, and that's where that would have happened, on the roof of the wing of offices. So we'll continue through this half of the room. And into the last room of the house. Now this room is the northeast chamber. This would have um, mirrored its sister room that we went into first. This room would have been a bedchamber if need be, storage if needed, just kind of a catch-all room, room if you will. Now today, we use this room to highlight the plastering process so you can really see how a wall goes from solid brick to fully plastered like you see in the rest of the house. Um, so this is a good example of all of the restoration work that's had to take place in this house over the last few years. So I want to thank you all very much for uh, attending this virtual tour of Thomas Jefferson's Poplar Forest. We hope you'll be able to come out and visit us very soon. Keep an eye out for more tours. And if you have any questions about anything you saw, I encourage you to go to our website, www.poplarforest.org. Um, check out our YouTube page. All of our social media pages are full of information and fun videos and things to do. And also, if you can, please give. Um, we, like all, all, most other nonprofits, um, receive very little state and federal funding. Any dollar that is spent on admission in the museum shop through donations, purchasing a membership, all go back to help us restore and conserve this house. So if you can, we would very much appreciate it. And thank you again for attending, and we hope to see you soon at Thomas Jefferson's Poplar Forest.